Hello, you reach Manesh Patel from IchimukuTrade.com. Today is June 4th, 2012. This is our weekly Ichimoku analysis for the global stock market where we cover all the stock markets from the US side to Europe to Asia uh, and to also even South America. Okay, that's our normal disclaimer here. This is for education use only. Um, if you decide to buy or sell any particular instrument, you're doing that at your own risk. All charts you're going to see are basically from uh, thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade and eSignal um, moving forward. This is our normal dis um, there's our contact information here uh, where you could contact us at info at eiicapital.com you could access our uh, website hmukutrade.com to access any of the free videos that we have available out there or you could contact us at any of our global offices located below. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to start off we're going to go to our heat map service Remember, basically, we're going to look at daily and weekly since we're looking at the long-term view. Uh, basically, if you get a five, like in this scenario, where majority of them are fives and yellows, that means basically it's overextended. The opportunity is already gone. The trades are already gone, and uh, it's at a point where a lot of people are now getting out of the trade. Okay. So if you look at all these country ETFs here. Okay. So let's go to a heat map over here. And you can see uh, pretty much here, everything is very, very overextended right now. Um, so there's no real opportunities right now to enter any trades long term. The only thing you could start doing is looking at uh, counter trend opportunities. Uh, and you could see some of them maybe here where the weekly is a different color. So there's one here in Germany. Uh, there's one in Japan. Uh, there's one here for the emerging markets and so forth. So let's start going through and look at every world index and then move forward um, and we could get a very good idea exactly where things are at so let's start off with Germany right now Just give me a sec it's gonna pull it up and remember on the left hand side is basically the daily time frame on the right hand side is basically the weekly time frame let me zoom in some here and if you look here the daily time frame for Germany is based for the DAX is basically is bearish trending uh, for the, the first time last week, we closed below the cloud on the weekly, so the first time sediment for the weekly DAX is now bearish. Um, doesn't mean that we're going to sit there and start a trend on the weekly time frame, but we're getting very, very close to it. Um, there's still a lot of things that need to occur in order for this bearish trend to continue, but right now, I would not sit there and short the DAX for a long-term purpose at all uh, because it would be very dangerous right now because the charts are definitely not set up for it at all. If you're basically trading in a daily time frame, I'll be very careful because you're ready, basically running right at major support levels right now. Uh, the next support level is going to be here at 59.022. Uh, so you know, be very careful there uh, with the DAX. Uh, next, we're going to look at the CAC, which is the Ferrer Paris. If you look at the Paris market, this is bearish trending on both the daily and weekly. Uh, and then, uh, unlike the DAX, the CAC is sitting there trying to get to its bottom here, which is major support at 28.56. So it's trying to sit there and get to that level right now, but this is bearish trending. Again, we've been talking about this Paris trade over and over and over for about a year. Uh, it's best to go long Germany and short Paris because that's been a great Paris trade that has worked over time. Uh, and remember, you're looking at this long term, not short term, too. Okay. Uh, next is the FTSE. If you look at the FTSE right now, uh, FTSE is basically bearish trending here on the daily time frame. We are at a major support level here, which is basically right about here. At 53.05 is a major support level, which is kind of hanging around. The more it hangs around this level, the more it's going to basically destroy the bearish trend moving forward. As far as the weekly is concerned, the sentiment has changed to being bearish, but there's a lot it needs to set up on a chart just to even start a trend to the downside. Uh, so it definitely needs to pull back if it's going to do that uh, to start a trend to the downside. 54.50 is going to be the next resistance level. After that, it's going to be 5600 for the FTSE, uh, which is basically the UK market. Uh, let's go over to Amsterdam. <coughs> Amsterdam is basic bearish trending on the daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, it's basically sentiment is bearish. However, it needs to pull back. If it could sit there and pull back to about, I would say, roughly right about here, about 296.32, that would be the best level it could pull back to. But it is getting over, oversold basically on the daily time frame right now. 
this is one everyone's been watching it's basically Spain and if you look here this basically had gotten to all our support levels that we had outlined in the previous video uh, and really there's not much more history that's left so uh, the only next level that we got that this thing can sit there and go to is this level here which is 53.95 and it looks like it's trying to get to that journey of 53.95 uh, but this is way way oversold and believe it or not still can get to that 53 85 very soon so just be very careful if you're in an existing position keep your stops very tight if you're in a new one trying to get a new one it's dangerous to short at that level right now Italy Italy is the same level right now we're at a major support level right now anything can really happen in this one uh, the momentum is very strong on the weekly time frame on a daily is still very strong however this is very overextended uh, and it does need a little pullback if it could pull back to about 13,000 uh, 600. That'll be a good pullback level at that point. If it tanks, I think it'll be really good, and we'll have a potential of breaking through the 12,000 level for the Italy market. Nordic, the Nordic market is basically bearish trending on the daily. On the uh, weekly, it's basically at a major support level right now, and basically in the cloud, so it's consolidating. So nothing really going on there. Oslo. This same thing as the Nordic region, so it's not even worth talking about. Switzerland, if you look at Switzerland, it's bearish trending here on the daily time frame. However, it's hit a major support, which is at the top of the cloud at 57.13. Um, and so it, right now it's at a major support and holding here. But notice this is not in the cloud or below the cloud at all. So the sentiment, believe it or not, is still bullish to a little neutral. So Switzerland is still very, very strong compared to a lot of the Europe countries right now. Let's go over to Russia. Russia is bearish trending on basically the daily and weekly and it's basically gotten to its major support level at basically at 1198. A lot of people are going to view this as basically a double bottom and probably sit there and start buying Russia. However, the momentum is still very, very strong where I would be very careful. I don't know if it if it's going to sit there and pull all the way back up to 1500. If it does, it, it's going to take a lot of news announcements to get that push to go all the way back. Israel if we look at Israel, it's bearish trending above the daily and weekly. However, we're at a major support, basically, which is right around 4:30, uh, and it looks like it's bounced off there. Uh, so we have to see exactly if it's going to form a double bottom or not. Turkey. If you look at Turkey, it's just like Switzerland, uh, where it's bearish trending on the daily, but on the weekly is basically at a major support, and the sediment is actually still bullish. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens with Turkey right now. But if you look at all of Europe right now, we're basically seeing that Switzerland and Turkey are still holding their ground as far as weekly is concerned, where the others have broken down completely. So let's now go to uh, Middle East. Let's go to Saudi Arabia. If you look at Saudi Arabia, this is basically bearish trending here on the week daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, we had a major support, which is pretty much right around here at 66.53. We've bounced off that, but it doesn't mean that we're going to stay and go start going back up right now. It just means that basically, basically bounced off that major support level. Uh, this thing will probably go back to 7,000 level, and at that point, we'll have to see exactly what it's going to do. And it may take another run to sit there and break this level here and to continue to start going lower. Let's go to Dubai. Dubai is just like the Saudi Arabia market, bearish trending on the daily level. Uh, on the weekly level, it's basically getting to a major support level at 1400. Once it gets there, it will be interesting to see exactly what happens there. Then let's go to Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is basically bearish trending on the daily level. On the weekly, it's basically in the clouds, so there's nothing really going on there. Now let's go over to Asia, and let's start with China and move, move forward. China, as you can see here uh, on the daily time frame, it's just basically the sentiment is bearish, but this thing is just consolidating. The consolidation pattern is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So this thing is going to blow one way or another very soon. But if you look at the weekly time frame, this started a bearish trend here, 
It did a pullback, and we're just kind of sitting there consolidating on the pullback right now to a point where we're really not doing anything. We're getting closer and closer to this cloud. If we get to this cloud, then what's going to happen? That cloud's going to force this thing to probably sit there and go down and retest the lows at 2200. So I definitely would not sit there and look for any long opportunities as far as China is concerned, but I would look for maybe bearish opportunities if it could break 2400 level. Uh, and at that point, I would look for bearish opportunities moving forward. Okay. That's China. Let's go to Hong Kong, which is right next to it. Hong Kong is basically bearish trending on both the daily and weekly, so there's nothing really to talk about right now. Uh, major support level, which it's already gotten to, is around 18,000. Uh, if it breaks at 18,000, it does have the potential going all the way down number 2,000 to 16,000 overall. Okay, let's now go to Korea. Korea basically is bearish trending, as you can see from the daily time frame. However, on the weekly, it just changed sentiments to being bearish. It does not mean it's starting a trend at all. In fact, it needs a pullback level to about 250. If it can pull back to 250, hold its ground there, and then start going down and break 230, this will start a trend to the downside, where at least get to about 200 and then potentially lower. Japan. If you look at Japan, this is bearish trending on the daily and also on the weekly, and we're pretty much now getting to the bottom of the range right around 8,200, and at that point, that's, that's a major support where it can bounce off. Tokyo, this is basically bearish trending on the daily and also bearish trending on the weekly. Notice this gap here, basically gap, gap right below the support level, so that's not good at all, and this does have a potential of going down a whole new leg but only time's going to tell in the next couple of weeks. Let's go over to Malaysia. Remember Malaysia has been a very very strong market and if you look from the weekly time frame it's still bullish compared to a lot of the other markets out there so this is still there but it's just consolidating hanging around uh, the major resistance of 1600 uh, the daily basically went tried to go bearish really missed out on its opportunity however now is the time believe it or not after it bounced off 1580 it has an opportunity to go all the way back down to 1510 and then has a potential breaking this with momentum so be very careful with the Malaysian market where this could be viewed as a double top and it does have a potential of breaking down especially if it gets below 1520 this can start a trend to the downside and get all the way down to about 1560 <clears throat> moving forward Singapore market this is basically bearish trending on the daily uh, it's basically a big consolidation pattern where it's at the bottom of the range on the weekly Indian Sensex market if you look here, it's basically bearish trending on the on the on the daily, on the weekly. Basically, it's a big consolidation pattern right now, where we're basically consolidating between fifteen thousand five hundred and about eighteen thousand. But there's nothing really going on there, and I'm sure the Nifty is going to resemble very similar to what the Sensex is saying, and it does. Okay, so that covers basically Asia. Now let's come over to the Americas. Let's go and cover Canada first. If you look at Canada, this is basically bearish trending on both the daily and weekly. Uh, this does need to sit there and pull back a little. If it can sit there and pull back to about 11,500, that would be a very good pullback level. And at that point, you could get some momentum to go bearish again. Here comes Mexico. If you look at Mexico, this is just like uh, Malaysia on the weekly time frame where the sentiment is bullish. However, it's kind of consolidating bullish. Uh, where it's at the top of the range. If you look at the week, daily time frame, this is now bearish. So uh, this cons this pattern here is what looks like we're trying to get to the bottom of the range now since the daily time frame is set up to go short. Uh, next we're going to go to Colombia. It's going to come up anytime now. There we go. Colombia from the daily, there's nothing really going on here. Weekly time frame, its sentiment has changed bearish. However, nothing's really going to happen here for a little while. This thing, I think, is just going to consolidate because momentum's not there. So there's nothing really to talk about Colombia at all. And we could even check the FTSE version of it. 
uh, but there's nothing going on as far as this is concerned. Here you can see the sediment's bearish over here, it's consolidating, so you got conflict across the board on that, so there's nothing to read. Brazil, Brazil basically is bearish trending on the daily, and you can see on the weekly is basically bearish trending here. However, this move from 60,000 all the way down to 53,000 has been a huge move. So it's too fast in a short amount of time. So it definitely needs to pull back before it can sit there and retest this low here if it wants to at 50,000. So we're going to wait and see what happens on that one. Chile. Chile, nothing really going on as far as the weekly is concerned. The daily is basically bearish trending. Notice the theme on all these, uh, these world indexes. The dailies are basically bearish trending. Again, this is another one. This is Argentina. It is bearish trending here. The weekly is actually about to start breaking down even more. If it could sit there and break 2156, Argentina's index is going to go a lot, lot lower. So be very careful and watch out for that uh, for the future. And I think we've covered everything there. So now let's go over to the US side. I'm going to switch platforms. And we're going to come over here. Remember, the left hand side chart is basically the daily chart, right hand side chart is basically the weekly chart. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with basically looking at NASDAQ. The reason why is we've been talking about the pairs trade and going along the NASDAQ and shorting the SP. So let's look to see where NASDAQ is moving forward. If we look here on the daily time frame, this is bearish trending here. However, on the weekly, we're basically. Uh, at a major major support level right now at 2463 if we hold that this week and then sit there in the next couple of weeks break try to break 2593 we can sit there retest the high of 2800 and actually start going higher uh, but we have to see exactly what's going to happen this week with the Nasdaq uh, moving forward the next strong index in the US was basically the Dow futures if you look at the Dow futures, you can see that it's actually breaking down some. Uh, this was a major, major support level here at uh, 12,261, that which it broke down. It's now trying to go to about 11,806, which is basically the next support level. This is still bullish. It's not trending anymore, but it's bullish consolidating. Uh, so we have to wait and see exactly when it gets to another support level to see when the opportunity is going to exist. Next is going to be basically the S&P 500 futures, and again, this looks very similar to the Dow. This is trying to get to 12.43 is the next support level, um, and of course, this is bearish trending here on the daily. But you have to see exactly what's going to happen at 12.43 to determine which way to trade as far as this future is concerned. And then lastly, Russell futures. Not even anything to talk about. It's bearish trending on the daily. It's at a major support at 7.33 on um, basically the weekly time frame. Uh, it is bullish uh, sentiment still, but uh, it's quickly, quickly change. So the Russell futures aren't really breaking down as long term too. And if it ever closes below the clouds, the sentiment will change on the weekly too. So that may get a push uh, for a lot of the small cap stocks to tank even more. Okay. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us here, or you could go to our website, ichimikutrade.com, and access any of our free resources that are available there. Thank you.